Hi, this is James Turner, and welcome to another edition of One Take Demos, where we're going to continue our look today at Common Lisp. Now, Lisp, as I've mentioned before, stands for List Processing, and we've seen Lisp just a tiny bit uh, in some of the earlier episodes, but today I wanted to actually focus in on Lists because they are a very powerful part of the language and show you a few of the things you can do with it. Now, the lists we've been dealing with to date have kind of looked like this, A, B, C, D. Um, that if again, I had to quote it, I've always would try calling the function A. Um, now, this is a linked list, but uh, what it's built out of underneath is something called a con cell. Um, this format here is actually a shorthand for something that looks like this. And you can see why we prefer to use the shorthand most of the time. This is fairly awkward. In fact, if I evaluate that, it's going to come back as A, B, C, D. So a con cell, which is the kind of indivisible piece of a linked list, is just something that has two parts. And for historical reasons having to do with the original equipment that list ran on, it's called the car and the cutter. So let's look at a non-linked list con cell. We have A dot B. Okay. So actually, let's put it somewhere where we can look at it. So we're going to say set Q uh, con cell to be, quote, A dot B. So if we say car of A, we get A. Now, by, now common list gives you a couple of synonyms for this stuff, which make more sense. The synonym for car is first. So first of A is A. It's this piece of it. Oh, sorry. I've been looking at the wrong thing here. If we say first of con cell, misspelled it. There we go. That's A. I'll just to remind you what con cell looks like. Okay. The cutter of con cell, should pick something with less letters in it is B. And the uh, common lisp synonym for cutter is rest, for a reason I'll show you in a second. Right? So, this is kind of interesting. It's basically you, ha you store two values um, in a con cell. In and of itself, it wouldn't be all that much use, though, because all you could store is two values. Well, suppose that instead of a single atomic element for the second part of a con cell, I give it another con cell. So if I say set Q linked list to be A dot, and then instead of the second element being a single con cell, I say C dot uh, D, now as you can see, when you've got a linked list, um, it basically, rather than putting a dot, puts a space. So let's see what that looks like for car and cutter or first and rest. First of A, or first of L list is still going to be A, but rest of L list is now going to be C dot D. Now, the way we normally use linked lists, um, you don't use the con cell notation at all. Uh, when I say A dot B, or A, B, C, D, E, this is a list where the car, the car of the first con cell is A, then it points to a linked list, or sorry, to another con cell, which has a car of B, which point whose cutter points to another con cell whose cutter is car is C, and whose cutter points to another con cell whose car is D, and uh, points to another con cell whose car is E. Now, what's the cutter or the rest of this last cell? Let's take a look. So to get a whole, let's, let's look at a smaller list just to make it more reasonable. So what is rest of a simple list A, which only has a single element in it, right? So it's the car of this uh, console is A. The cutter is nil. Nil is the empty, empty list. And by convention, the last console in a linked list uh, 
is nil. So we're probably not going to use the dotted notation much anymore, having kind of shown it to you. But let's show you a couple of other interesting things and properties of, of linked lists. So one of them is let's uh, create a linked list called nums. And we'll make it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 99. Okay, one of the cool things you can do, and this is because programs, it lists and lists your programs, there's a function called apply, and you give it as a first argument a function. So in this case, plus, which by the way, plus is a um, synonym for, and the second argument is a list. And what it's going to do is it's going to hand all of the items in the list in as an argument to that function. So when you do this, I get back 114. Similarly, I could apply times to nums, and I'll get some outrageously big number. So that's one kind of cool thing you could do is this is similar to, um, actually I'm trying to think what, there's ways to do that in JavaScript, but it's a very useful little feature and I'll show you in the next episode when we talk about some other arguments you can use with functions, how you could use that to your advantage when you use an and rest clause in a function. So the other thing I want to show you here is a property of lists having to do with the fact that uh, the way they use pointers. So we've got our nums uh, variable and we'll stick with that. So suppose I set q uh, nums but one to be rest of nums. Now because that's the everything but this first element, it's going to be two three four five ninety nine as you'll see. Now there's a uh, function, which is actually a macro, called setf, which is really useful and we're going to use it a lot. What setf says is, whatever the first thing you give me as an argument is, that's what I'm going to set. And the second argument is what to set it to. Now what's cool is you can put into setf a lot of different things, like you can put array references, you can put uh, list references. So if I say setf nth, I'm going to have to remember the format of nth again, I believe it's number list, nth four of nums to be 66. If we look at nums now, I actually set the fourth element to be 66. It figures out what this is accessing and then sets it to whatever the value is. So it's a very powerful way of setting values. Um, now, here's the question. Nums but one, what happened to it? It also had that element changed. And the reason it had the element changed is they're actually pointing at the same list. When you say rest, remember these things are cells in memory, and you're saying give me the cutter of whatever this is. Well, the cutter is going to be a pointer to the next con cell, uh, which is the same as the um, second element being pointed to by the original list. So you've modified in memory, so you've modified them both. And that's something you actually have to watch out for when you're working with lists, that there, there are ways to copy a list so that you get new con cells. So then the two of them will not be in sync with each other, and if you modify one, you don't modify the other. So this has been a brief introduction today to lists. We will continue next time looking at some powerful things you can do with function arguments, and we are actually moving our way toward doing that website uh, server in a few weeks. So until then, this is James Turner for One Take Demos.